So as we come in, one thing that you notice right away is how low the ceilings are. I can touch that, uh, the ceilings. It's part of uh, the, one of Wright's hallmarks, which is compression and then release. And so as you go inside the house, you then see the space kind of expand in front of you spatially. Um, it's, a, it's a great technique and, and it's uh, employed quite uh, fantastically in this space. You have the opportunity to go either into the main living room or off in the other direction towards the, the bedrooms. So uh, we'll choose which one we want to do right now and let's maybe mm. go in the living room. Okay. okay. So this would be the compression and release right here. One item that was interesting, frankly, right, in all the homes he's designed there's not two fireplaces that are the same. Every one is its, its own unique uh, feature. And every one of them is different. In this room here, uh, there were some major mechanical issues that happened. Um, a lot of the underground air returns had collapsed. So what year was that, Tim? 95, 1995. So we had to cut up the floor uh, quite extensively, get new uh, air returns to the locations there under the stairs in this area because the house was not cooling properly. So we did get the house up to proper standards for Linda to live in and so she would be comfortable and made those type of uh, adjustments. The ceiling had uh, the ceiling had uh, a different coating on it. It was full of asbestos. So we had asbestos removal. We did the work, but uh, this furniture here on the sides, the benches, that's all original. That was all kept intact. Uh, and we just refinished the windows. One thing that Franklin Wright living rooms invite you to do is to actually sit down and enjoy the space. And when you're sitting, the windows are perfectly proportioned to take maximum advantage of the, the, the views. So here I'm sitting and I see all the way to the, the city below me and the sky. It's a very tight view and, and that's made possible by the this kind of ledge that happens here. And then you have the clear story windows above letting additional light in. Here in the desert, especially on this south facing part of the hill, you get the bright summer sun, the bright winter sun, it's just very bright. And to help accommodate that brightness, there is this opportunity to shade. And so this house is as much about shade as it is about the views, and I think that's one of the fantastic things about it. Another thing that you'll notice from this perspective is that you can actually look back at the house itself um, through from one part of the, the house to the other, and that was something that Wright uh, employed regularly in, on his residential projects, particularly where you can be in the living room and look back at another part of the house. It's as if by being inside you can almost see the house from the outside, a, a fun way of, of dealing with things. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the structure of the house, Tim? Um, when we did do the remodel, we had a, a set of original plans, and um, I was amazed at the framing, uh, how that was all done. It was very unique, uh, the way he created these circles and these large overhangs. Uh, it was a very fun project to work on and to see uh, how he did those things back in the day when he probably didn't have as good of materials and things uh, now. Um, some of the problems we had when we had it, this fireplace goes up and it goes back the other direction on the roof, which gave it a lot of ledges for water to sit on. So we had to go through a really extensive waterproofing. This thing leaked quite bad right here. Um, and Frank Lloyd Wright also had problems with his skylights because he didn't have the right technology. He didn't have the right materials, and they, they all, all the skylights leaks and leaked, and nowadays we have uh, better systems, to, so we put the skylights back in and, and haven't had leaks on that. So. so what's different in here now? Is the floor different than it was when you were The going? floor was an exposed aggregate. Uh, some of the older pictures even have carpet over the floor, um, but because we had to cut up the floor to get the air returns in, Linda, this was Linda's deal, uh, the copper slate was her thing that she wanted. She handpicked every piece she went, she was here with all, picking through all the crates for this in the pool, pool deck area. So that was Linda's, that was Linda's thing. And this furniture was all here when Linda was here? Yes, um, um, these pieces here were made by somebody that 
mm -hmm. is registered to make Franklin yeah, Bright Furniture. Yeah, right. Company. Yes, these. yeah. So she had these made when we finished the job. Well, the table was here, um, but these chairs, and this table was here, but this, these, I don't remember these chairs um, until the end. Uh, she had the, the seat, seats re covers remade, um, and a lot of the coffee tables and stuff were part of the original when she got it. So the, the closets in the hallway, so right, Frank Lloyd Wright also, in addition to not being favorable to garages, was also uh, uh, not a proponent of basements or attics. He felt that that was just a space where you would add to the clutter of the, the memories that you had. What he wanted you to do was to live in a very modern, contemporary, live for the day type of experience. And so all of the closets are very accessible to you as you come and go throughout the course of your daily life. Here in this case, he's using the, the hallway that connects the, all the bedrooms to the main space uh, as an additional access point to closets. And so uh, as you walk down this, this hallway, the closets provide kind of a meter or a rhythm to your experience as you go down the, the hallway. He, he also is positioning the windows very strategically above the closets so that you get the natural light and little hidden pockets of view as you walk down. Then you come into the master suite um, and Wright is, is accentuating the, the, the kind of sensuousness of the uh, walls by avoiding the hard corners. So you have that here. Now, of course, these were just uh, illustrated in, in sketch form in Wright's early designs, but he had done this in other parts of his, uh, his other buildings. And so the apprentices who worked on the project to, to really make it happen, to execute it, knew what kind of details they, they were expected to do for Franklin Wright House. And this was, I think, lovely work. Did you do any work on, on this? You know, we sanded and we finished it, or did you? We, we actually had. You have to remember the the master bedroom ended here before, right here, and that bed the bed was right there, and this was another bedroom, so that wall was redone, um, and so I went down to the supply house and hand picked through a bunk of sheets, getting the ones that had, I thought had the nicest graining to match, and then I tried to the grain match as much as we could because we did a lot of work in the back in the hallways because that changed there too. You'll see that when we go back there. So the bed was all here. The bed had a um, custom built nightstands on both sides. And there was a narrow, narrow entrance to the bedroom right where Victor's standing. This is all original um, cabinetry here. Um, um, this space, uh, was arranged, rearranged uh, somewhat. The shower was in the back here. These are original cabinets and closets, uh, so she saved those. Uh, the shower was a little bit smaller. It was a snail shower back in the corner. So a little bit of changes uh, back in this space, but again, it was all modernized, new plumbing, uh, AC was in, improved, and so everything was functional, made more functional. Um, one of the real challenges to redesigning this master suite was to provide a luxury that uh, perhaps the original owners didn't have the budget for. The original owners, uh, Norman Likes and his, his family, was, they were a large family, and so the bedroom wing was, was subdivided into a number of different uh, very small bedrooms. When Tim and I were involved in, in the re-planning and, and execution, we eliminated one bedroom at least, yes, right. right? It was one bedroom that we eliminated, allowing this suite to get much larger, uh, and then the other rooms kind of filled in the gap there. Uh, this bathroom here was, was somewhat of a challenge from the design uh, side. I, I remember really fighting with the geometry of this rectangular tub and, and trying to make it work. I, I think it actually works quite nicely, but um, the challenges of this type of geometry our, our legion <laughs> really uh, make it tough to, to make it work. But I think it worked, ended up quite nicely. One, one funny story I have here, this was, a, this was a new tile on the market, copper tile, but at one point Linda was debating about gold tile. And on Friday she said, I think I want to put gold tile on the ceiling. 
and it was like twenty thousand dollars to print. And I said okay, and she came back on Monday and said no, I decided not to. But but uh, she had uh, eccentric tastes and uh, liked that type of thing. And our job as architects was to try to kind of refine those eccentric tastes and make it into something that would you know make her happy, but still be somewhat in line with the the original design intention of the of the house. So um. I like how the bed is up on a, uh, uh, the, yeah. a little pedestal, uh -huh. and so you can sit in bed and you can still see the view out the out the low windows here. And of course, the big mirror behind the bed. Right. And this is a structural slab here. I remember us cutting the floor. There was a ton of rebar in this floor right here oh, sure. because of the balcony yeah. and the way it, it overhanged there. That was it was we were surprised how much it was in there. But it's a well built building. I mean, it's the, well built, the right. concrete block and, uh -huh. and it, it, everything connects right into the bedrock. Um, for me, one of the fascinating things about the design was how almost what the intimate relationship between the natural rock outcroppings and the house itself, where typically you would take a bulldozer and completely scrape back every single portion of the house and then another 10 or 20 feet on either side. Here, the rocks are, and vegetation are, are kept very much intact. And that's why the house looks like it just sits upon that landscape in a wonderful way. Uh, come on out to the, uh, the little balcony here. It's not large, but it's just large enough to be able to look back upon the house. So you can, when you're over on the balcony, you can look back at the house. The relationship between the house and the mountain behind it is, is no accident, it's very important. And then if you swivel around, you can see this wonderful panorama of the, of, of the skyline. And of course at night, it's spectacular with all the city lights. Well, Victor, this is where you're mentioning you're on the inside Look like your back. outside looking back in, in the reverse of where it was in the living room. So this space used to be two bedrooms. There was a wall right here that broke this room into two pieces. And uh, Linda wanted to have an ensuite bathroom and then create a more luxurious suite here. So we did remove this wall and then create a separate bathroom here uh, for just this suite, uh, which required there was an extra door over there and so it required us to do the repairs to the paneling and, and match all that up. This door right here was built in a way that it, that it just blends right in to the wall paneling. That's something that they like to do. Um, so it turned out, you know, it turned out fabulous. These nightstands were in one of the other bedrooms. So they were repurposed. Uh, that was, every one of the bedrooms had a desk. Um, you can turn and see that desk. Every one of them had a desk like that. Uh, he had the closet and the desk together. That was, every one of these four bedrooms had that. So we uh, were able to repurpose that. Okay, hold on. I'm just trying to remember. This was untouched, right? Yeah, this yeah, was this, a room. This, this, this is, is a good example of how small the original bedrooms were. Um, and the idea was that this was going to be a kind of an untouched room, an, an example of that whereby everything else was, was completely transformed. This one has much of the original characteristics of the, the plan. And that was designed as a bed. Right, yeah. You know, on, on that part of it. And again, you see that this has its own desk. It was into having a desk in every bedroom and uh, the built-in closets. Oh, pretty cool. This room actually was a workshop. So this was, uh, uh, you couldn't get a car in here, but it was a place that you could, had a workbench in it and everything. Uh, there was a door right there that came into it from the outside, so it uh, wasn't connected to the main house. And Linda uh, designed this and wanted this as her entertainment room. So we created an entertainment space there and uh, had, she had a large couch across this side. So this is where she watched TV, kind of a den. Um, Linda, bought a, uh, when we were doing the work at the end, had bought a very expensive couch and uh, it would not fit in the, in the doorway. So we disassembled that block wall, got the couch in here and put it back in shape. And that's kind of stuff we did with Linda, so.